What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today bringing you guys another Madden 15 Ultimate Team informational video. And today, guys, we actually got some information regarding the player ratings on the new game. So this was actually the top 15 players as they will be released into Madden 15. Now, I'm assuming that these are elite cards. I, I think it kind of references that, but it doesn't specifically say that these are elite cards. I mean, they're red, so I'm assuming that they're in the elite section, but I'm not exactly sure how that whole thing is going to work yet at this point. But let's take a look at these top 15 players. They are from all kinds of different positions, so let's take a look at them. Starting off at number 15, at 89 overall, it's San Francisco 49ers middle linebacker Navarro Bowman, and it says... Bowman is the perfect balance of speed, power, and knowledge. His awesome play recognition allows him to dissect a play faster than any other linebacker, and he has the speed and hit power to come up and make a tackle. So, that is the first player in today's video, number 15 ranked, Navarro Bowman at 89 overall. Now moving on to another 89 overall player, and this is a defensive tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Gerald McCoy. Having trouble stopping the run? Gerald McCoy is the epitome of a run-stuffing defensive lineman. With his pass, ru pass rush skills still at an elite level, McCoy is the best run-stuffed defensive lineman at launch. Do not run up the middle against him. So obviously, he's going to have some great block shedding, probably some amazing strength, things like that. But he's still 89 overall. Now, obviously... 89 overall, when we're talking about current Madden Ultimate Team, is not very good, but it's nice to see that 89 overall is going to be pretty good, I, I think, uh, at least at launch. Obviously, that we're expecting that there are going to be better cards as the game goes through, but 89 overall for Gerald McCoy is a good number. And then number uh, three in today's ranking at, or I guess, what is he, 13, I should say, excuse me. Uh, and that is Indomitong Sue, another defensive tackle, actually drafted the same year as Gerald McCoy. And it says, need better interior pass rush? Sue answers those questions and concerns and then some. He has high ratings in strength, acceleration, block shedding, and power moves. Sue has the, all the tools that a player needs to dominate an offensive line. So Indomitong Sue sounds like he's a little bit more of a pass rusher, while McCoy is more of a run stuffer. That, of course, makes sense given their respective abilities um, in their current NFL teams. So that makes a lot of sense. They're both 89 overall, though. Good to see that both of those players are getting a decent rating right off the bat. Moving forward, and we have Robert Quinn. In only his third year in the NFL, Quinn led the NFC in sacks and was only one away from 20. What Quinn lacks in strength, he makes up for with his speed and his 95 rated power moves. So obviously, 95 rated power moves right off the bat, that is going to be beastly. It sounds like he's going to kind of struggle in strength though, so that's kind of unfortunate for us. But, uh, you know, like they said in the, on, on the uh, little review here, that speed and that power move combo is going to be nasty. It is going to be very, very tough to defend against him, and he is going to be a great card right at launch. Moving forward now, we have number 11, John Sullivan, and it says the center of the Minnesota Vikings, in this case, is the foundation and the play caller of the offensive line. Sullivan is the one to open up inside running lanes for Adrian Peterson, and he boasts a high awareness rating to go along with his run blocking skills. So, this is the first one where I think it's kind of controversial, obviously. We have Jonathan Sullivan here. Now, don't get me wrong. John Sullivan is... He's a good player, but are we really going to say that he is the best center in the NFL? I, My personal opinion, probably borderline top five, but is he the best? I mean, we've got Alex Mack out there. I mean, my personal opinion is that he is definitely better, but I mean, to me, I'm kind of surprised that they would put John, Sull John Sullivan this high. I mean, at 89 overall, that seems very, very high. He, and obviously, they're saying that he has high awareness, which is, I guess, for an offensive lineman, it matters because obviously we're never going to use or control offensive linemen when we're playing the game. But at the same time, though, it is kind of one of those attributes that you just kind of look at and you kind of wonder, is it just the, the attribute that they boost to make players who aren't good in other attributes look better as far as their overall score? So... You know, that's kind of my opinion. I don't know if John Sullivan's actually going to be the best center in the game. It's just his overall attribute, I guess, is going to be the best to start things off. And I kind of disagree with it. 
So let's move on to number 10, and we have another controversial one. This one is a player who is pretty much always injured at this point, and that is Rob Gronkowski, tight end for the New England Patriots. Obviously, Gronk has just amazing skills, but, uh, I mean, it's kind of surprising to see him be this high considering he pretty much hasn't played in, you know, for the most part in about a year at this point. I mean, he played a few weeks, but that was about it. But anyways, it says Gronkowski still holds the record for most touchdowns by a tight end in a single season. He has very good speed and acceleration for a tight end, as well as elite strength and pass catching abilities. So obviously we don't see the injury here. Uh, That's going to be the real question on this card, I think. Does it have a high enough injury rating where he's not going to be constantly hurt? Or is it going to be like some of the other cards that we had in the previous months where... You know, even if it's a high overall card that does really, really well when it's on the field, it's constantly hurt. So is it worth even having on your team? We don't know that at this point. All that we know is that he has high attributes in speed, acceleration, strength, and pass catching attributes. So obviously Gronk is definitely one of the fan favorites at the position. He is an excellent player when he's on the field. And I'm sure his Mutt card is going to, to show that as well. Moving on to the guy who most people at this point are considering the best tight end in the game. If you do not consider Gronkowski the best tight end because he is injured all the time anyway. So that is Jimmy Graham, of course, of the New Orleans Saints. And it says the best base tight end at launch, Jimmy Graham, is the complete package. He has the size and strength to put the defender on their back and the catching skills to bring down any pass in his area. So obviously, Jimmy Graham has been an amazing pass catcher over the past couple of seasons. He, we had that you know big contract controversy, controversy in the offseason where he tried to claim that he was a wide receiver, but the NFL eventually agreed with the Saints, and we they eventually determined that he was indeed going to be paid as a tight end when they gave him the franchise tag. So, you know, that... That just goes to show you how much of a pass catcher he really is, that that was a controversy. He is, you know, they, I guess he is a good blocker, but, I mean, he's definitely not known to be a blocker. He's known to be out there as a receiver and making plays in in the passing game, catching passes from Drew Brees, and, and scoring a ton of touchdowns as well. So Jimmy Graham at number nine does make a lot of sense, and I would definitely agree with that. I think for fantasy football this year as well, he should certainly be a first-round pick. That's just a little bit of preview. I might be doing some fantasy football analysis here on my channel. If you guys are unaware, that is something that I take very, very seriously. Spend a lot of money on fantasy football, do a lot of research every single year. So um, I'm pretty pretty decently in the know at this point. I write for a couple different websites as well on fantasy football. So we'll go into that a little bit more in a future video. But let's move on to number eight, and that is Brandon Marshall, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. Brandon Marshall is uh, definitely one of the biggest receivers in the league and one of the best pure pass catchers. So here's what it says. Marshall's measure- measurable I don't know why it says Marshall's measurable rival. It should be measurables. Come on, EA. Rival that of fellow elite wideout Calvin Johnson. Marshall, however, has a higher catch and traffic rating, making him arguably the most reliable target in Mutt. And I actually completely agree with that. Brandon Marshall should be definitely one of the best just like possession receivers in the NFL in this game. And uh, it, it sounds a lot like that is going to be Uh, Something that is very important in this game as they revamped the actual playing mechanics of Madden 15 versus Madden 25. So we're seeing a lot uh, in just the, the small videos that we've seen of it's not just about speed anymore and that the guys that are the the actual you know, possession receivers like a Brandon Marshall, those guys have a lot more value this year than they ever have in the past. So I think that this is the the type of card that is definitely going to be great to pull. It's going to be a lot of fun if you get a card like this on your team, a big body, physical pass catching wide receiver. So definitely looking forward to having a Brandon Marshall on my team. Moving on to number seven, and we have Von Miller, and it says the highest rating base, highest rated base outside linebacker. Von Miller's pass rush skills are still dominant, and he gets around most offensive tackles whenever he pleases. So Von Miller, although he did not have his best season last year, still a very, very good card. This is the first 90 overall card of the bunch. So we saw, what was that? Uh, seven different or seven or eight different players at 89 overall. And this is the first one at 90 overall. Uh, So Von Miller definitely considered arguably the best pass rusher in the game. Um, 
you know, obviously there are other guys that led the league in sacks last year, and then you've got your your guys like J.J. Watt who play at a different type of position, so maybe they don't generate quite the pure pass rush because they're going up against um, interior offensive linemen more often, or they're going up against, you know, they're just playing a different type of, of uh, scheme. So, you know, that is something to definitely take into consideration with Von Miller because he's got that pure pass rushing attribute. Now, we have heard that there is going to be more emphasis on the type of player that you place at certain positions. So it could be the kind of situation where if you're playing a 43 defense and you play Von Miller as one of your linebackers, that it's not going to be quite as productive as it would be to play him as a 34 outside linebacker where he can be more, uh, you know, emphasized on purely rushing the passer so that could be something that we need to pay attention to I'm not exactly sure how that's all going to shake out but definitely this card sounds like it's going to be a nice one at 90 overall moving forward to the top left tackle in the game and that is of course as we I'm sure pretty much everybody knows at this point Madden absolutely loves Joe Thomas and there's really not any reason not to I mean he's an excellent Excellent left tackle, and it says, due to the new defensive lineman engagement system, a great offensive line is more important than ever. The left tackle is the heart and soul of the offensive line, and Joe Thomas is the best in the business. I pretty much agree with that at this point. I mean, I know there are a couple guys that probably compete as the best left tackle in the game, but Joe Thomas has been doing it for so long at this point, and uh, I don't really think there's any real question that he is an elite left tackle. No problem with this rating at all. And let's move on to number five. Number five is possibly my favorite player in the entire NFL, and that is, of course, Calvin Johnson of the Detroit Lions wide receiver, and it says, it's not a surprise that Megatron is the highest rated wide receiver. He is a rare receiver that is rated high in both spectacular catch and catch in traffic. An unfair combination of speed and strength makes Calvin Johnson very dangerous. Obviously, he is also one of the biggest, most physical receivers in the league in terms of just like his pure size. So Calvin is an absolute animal uh there's pretty much no any I, don't, I can't really think of any player until they start to release like the ultimate legends if they do that again this year that are going to even compete with calvin johnson he is going to be the best wide receiver he's got like they said he has the speed and the size and you know there might be guys that have better pure size or better pure speed but there is absolutely nobody that has anywhere near the combination of the two. Josh Gordon might have potentially been up there, but I think due to the fact that he's probably going to be suspended for the entire year, kind of sounds like they're not going to rate him very high in this game. He did not crack the top 15, despite the fact that he led the NFL in receiving last year in only, what, 14 games? So, you know, with him being really the only other logical guy to be up here in the top wide receiver rankings, other than, of course, Marshall and Calvin Johnson, um, I think that Calvin, like I said, is probably going to be the best mutt card throughout the entire year until they start to release like the Ultimate Legend Jerry Rice's and that kind of stuff, just like they did this year. So let's move on now to number four, and that is Adrian Peterson, one of the absolute fan favorites, and it says AP is a completely balanced back. He's got the speed to run around you as well as the strength of trucking to run right through you. Combine this with a strong GP offensive line, and you have a very formidable rush attack. So GP obviously means ground and pound, and that, of course, we've heard in previous reports that the chemistries are back. So he has GP chemistry with this card as well. So I I'm not exactly sure how important those things are going to be, although I have heard that there is an increased emphasis on them. So we'll have to see how that all pans out. I'm not exactly sure, but I do know that Adrian Peterson, of course, like it said in here, is definitely one of the best complete backs in the NFL. You know, a lot of people would make the case that in terms of just his pure skills, Uh, of strength, speed, and all that type of combination, vision, and that kind of stuff, that he is arguably one of the best running backs in the history of the league, and I don't think there's really any disagreeing with that. Adrian is still in his prime. He's starting to get to that tail end of his prime, but I certainly see no reason why he can't be an elite running back again this year, and he's certainly given that attribute for Mutt. Next card is number three, and this one, I, I just, I don't understand what Madden's doing. I know that they they want to be kind of on the cutting edge of these type of things, but okay, number three is Peyton Manning. Now, for years, I've been saying that I think Tom Brady is better than Peyton Manning, okay? And don't, please don't, let's not make an argument about that. 
I love Tom Brady. I'm a big fan of his. But Peyton Manning had the best season ever by a quarterback. Ever. The best season ever by a quarterback. And he was the league MVP. He brought his team to the Super Bowl. Yeah, they lost in the Super Bowl. So the most recent thing that we saw of Peyton Manning was not his best performance. But how about the other 18 weeks of the season where he just whipped the crap out of everybody? How about that? I mean, seriously, Peyton Manning had, like I said, the best season ever by a quarterback. He threw what? It was more than 50 touchdowns. It was like 55 touchdowns or something like that. And they're only going to rate him at 90 overall. He's the third highest rated player. And I'm just head in hands right now because I just have no words. I, I mean, what what would constitute a player being rated higher than 90 at quarterback at this point I mean would he have to throw 100 touchdown passes with no interceptions I just don't understand it it just blows my mind there's nothing that would tell us that Peyton Manning shouldn't be rated as the highest player in this game it it absolutely astonishes me but you know Madden will do that from time to time I guess (laughs) here's what it says about him though it says with the new QB accuracy system Manning's stock has risen even higher his throw short and mid are nearly perfect and defenders will bite on his 98 rated play action rating he is the best base quarterback available so at least he's the best quarterback available but at the same time though it's just so frustrating when you see something like the fact that he's only 90 overall when these no these next two players are both rated 91 overall and that of course, being number two, Richard Sherman. Now, Richard Sherman is the cover athlete for Madden 15. And so we're, of course, assuming that he's going to be rated as the highest player, or at least tied as the highest player. And I don't have any problem with that because he was the best cornerback in the league last year. And he definitely made a name for himself by talking smack about Crabtree and things like that in the playoffs. But here's what it says. The most impactful base player in the secondary. Sherman's press rating, coverage skills, and size enable him to shut down any receiver. He's a game changer that cuts off an entire third of the field. So I completely agree with that. I have no problem with Sherman being rated this high. But at the same time, though, I like I said with the, the previous video where we went over some of these type of things... I still think Peyton Manning should be the highest rated player in the game. I don't know what you guys think, but let me know. Final player is J.J. Watt, and he is also 91 overall, and it says arguably the best player at launch. J.J. Watt has 96 block shedding, 96 power moves to go along with 95 strength. You better send an extra blocker his way, or you'll be in for a very, very long day. So obviously this card at, at 91 overall is an absolute animal. And uh, he kind of sounds like he is going to be a better version of the uh, Robert Quinn that we saw earlier in this. Now, obviously, Robert Quinn played right end. J.J. Watt plays left end, and they play in a completely different style of defense. But when you're playing Mutt, you're kind of doing it based off of your own scheme anyway. So my opinion, though, is that J.J. Watt here at 91 overall is slightly overrated. Now, I'm not saying that J.J. Watt isn't the best left end in the game. I do think that he is. But at the same time, though, I also think that we need to respect the fact that he's not coming off of his best season. Uh, the Texans were the worst team in the NFL last year. And now, obviously, that's not J.J. Watt's fault. I'm not going to try and fault him for the rest of his team being crap. But J.J. Watt didn't have his best season. So why is he the best rated player in the game? I mean, it's it's kind of silly at this point. I would have no problem with him being tied with guys like Calvin and Adrian Peterson and Joe Thomas and Von Miller as kind of that second set of guys. But Peyton Manning, Richard Sherman should be the top two guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you agree with me, make sure you press that like button. And also, if you guys are new to the channel, press that subscribe button because we are going to have plenty of Madden 25 Ultimate Team content. Or excuse me, I don't know why I said Madden 25. We're still going to do Madden 25 until Madden 15 comes out. But we're going to have a ton of Madden 15 content when that does come out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like I said, I want to kind of get... A little bit more uh, of your opinions because I think that there are a few guys that got absolutely snubbed in this. My opinion is that Patrick Willis got snubbed. I think he should be up there over a guy like John Sullivan. I mean, come on. And then how about like LaShawn McCoy and Jamal Charles who are both coming off of career years at the running back position? I think that arguably they should both be up here or at least they should be tied. I mean, I don't have any problem with a couple of these other guys being rated higher than them, but come on, like should should uh really should John Sullivan or like a Rob Gronkowski who's coming off of an injured year or even somebody like Gerald McCoy should they be higher than Jamal Charles and LaShawn McCoy 
I don't really think so. And then how about Drew Brees? Because Drew Brees is another player who, I, obviously, there's only one quarterback in this entire top 15, which is a little bit surprising to me. Madden is usually all about giving these quarterbacks high ratings. But Drew Brees missed it. I, I'm assuming that he's going to be right up there at like an 88 overall or something like that. But I guess we don't really know at this point. The final player that I think should be up here, and I mentioned this in my previous video about the uh, free safety position, is Earl Thomas. I think Earl Thomas is arguably the, the overall best defensive player in the NFL, so he should certainly be in the top 15 as far as overall players go. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you guys for tuning in. I do appreciate it, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.